here's what happens when you die. What happens to your online accounts, I mean. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, the best place to upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. Today's lesson is number 485. JR is the producer, and he has uploaded today's full lesson to plainenglish.com slash 485. Coming up today, what happens to your online accounts when you die? A lot of people are prepared for death with wills, estates, and beneficiaries of bank accounts. But as more of our lives move online, have you given any thought, as depressing as it may seem, to what happens to all of your online property? That's what we'll be talking about in today's lesson. In the second half of the lesson, I'll describe the English expression in progress, and JR has a song of the week. Most of us don't think about death very often. When we do, we tend to think about people, faith, and property. The plan for what happens after you die, in a legal sense, is called estate planning. In estate planning, it's common to think about who will inherit personal possessions, artwork, bank accounts, investments, real estate, and other property. Depending on your family situation, you may specify who will take custody of children or pets. But what about the things that exist purely online? You can easily leave a box of sentimental photos to a family member in a will. But what happens if those photos are on a phone with a password or on a Facebook account? It's a good idea to invest a little time now to think about what happens to your digital property when you die. The first step is to know what you have. Many online accounts have no value after you die. Your Spotify account, for example, has nothing of interest to anyone. When you stop paying the bill, it will be deactivated. But some things are more personal and may be of interest to the people you leave behind. Here are some things to think about. The contents of your phone, tablet, and computer. Social networks like Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. The contents of a photo sharing service like Flickr. Files on a file sharing or backup site like Dropbox. Sellers' accounts on platforms like Etsy, Amazon, or eBay. Blogs, websites, and domain name registrations. And finally, the keys to your cryptocurrency wallet. The next thing to know is that you own very little of your online life. You can leave a box of sentimental photos to a family member because you own the photos. But you can't leave your Instagram account to anyone because you don't own the account. 
most of what you think you own online is really licensed to you, and that license is either free or paid. When you die, the license expires. The business can decide what to do with the files, messages, and the online account, and that varies. If you don't do anything, you're at the mercy of the terms and conditions. That long document you probably didn't read. So what happens if you die and nobody takes over an account? Here are a few examples. Yahoo Mail may delete an account after just 90 days of inactivity. A year after that, the data will be gone forever. If you don't log into Gmail for 24 months, Google may delete all the content, but it will keep the account active. On social media, another family member may choose to memorialize your account. A family member can contact Facebook, for example, with evidence of your death. If that happens, your account will be frozen. The public content will still be available. Friends can share memories with the deceased person's memorialized profile. A family member can request that the profile be deleted, but nobody can get access to the account without the password. Some businesses allow heirs to access a deceased member's content, but only with extensive documentation. Dropbox, for example, requires proof that a person has died and requires a court order stating that an heir has permission to access the data. If you haven't planned in advance, your Dropbox files are frozen. If you set a password on a computer, the data on the hard drive may be accessible depending on how tight your security settings are. But chances are relatives will discard an old computer or wipe it clean and all your files will be gone. If you have a website or a blog, you probably pay for web hosting services and domain registration. Without a digital plan upon your death, the accounts will gradually lapse, the content will disappear, and the domain will be free for others to register. For some people, all that is fine. Much of our online life is not worth preserving. But some of it might be. You might have emails from deceased relatives that you'd like to share with your kids or other relatives. Your kids might enjoy reading your own correspondence if you're comfortable with that. It would help them understand you better and preserve your legacy. You might have a book in progress. You might have documented your memories in computer files. Others may want access to family photos stored on photo sharing sites. Candid photos of yourself may not mean much to you, but they might be comforting to those who survive. 
you might have a blog, podcast, or online business that you'd like to survive. Or you might prefer that your data be completely deleted upon your death. The point is, if you don't plan in advance, you don't get to control what happens. So on Monday's lesson, we'll talk about how to plan for a digital death. Now here's one I didn't mention before. Crypto fans, watch out. If you don't pass along the crypto key in your will, it's possible those coins can't be accessed by your heirs even if you want them to be. There are extensive legal processes in place to pass along property, even bank accounts and investments, but none of that works in crypto. So if you're a crypto investor, and if you love having assets outside the traditional financial and legal system, then you have a special obligation to your heirs to make sure they can access those funds when you die. This topic is even more important if you're an artist, business owner, or creator online. Imagine if you're a musician, you've got work in progress, or even finished work that's not saved anywhere else. Now, not to get too personal, but if it all ends for me tomorrow, I would want the contents of Plain English to live on. Now, Plain English Plus members can relax. I'll leave instructions for JR to stop your payments. So, I'll be taking careful notes during Monday's lesson about planning a digital death, and I'll do that for my own benefit. Today's English expression is in progress. When something is in progress, it has started, but it has not finished. We were talking earlier about what happens to your digital life when you die. Most of the data we generate the emails, the files, the messages, whatever. These have no value to anyone in the future. I just looked at the last 10 emails I got, and I can guarantee you that nobody else wants to read them. But some things may have value. I gave several examples of data that may have value to your heirs or relatives. And one of those examples is if you had a book in progress. In progress, in this case, means that the book has been started but not finished. Most of us are not authors but it's common for older people to begin to collect their memories in online documents to record their experiences in life. Some of these will turn into published memoirs, but many of these will simply live on within a family. But wouldn't it be a shame if a person died with a book in progress and nobody could access the draft? Okay, on to happier topics. 
Are you someone who likes to have a lot of work in progress? Or do you like to finish one thing before starting another? If you follow the Agile method in business, you know that one big rule is to limit your work in progress. That means start something, finish it, and only then start something else. It's not good to have a lot of work in progress. It's not good to have a lot of things that have been started but not finished. In many fields, that's distracting and limits your productivity. But if you are an artist, you might think differently. I marvel when I read descriptions of paintings from famous artists, and I see that the painting took, say, 10 years to complete. Now, obviously, a painter didn't devote every day to a painting for 10 years. But creative people often have a lot of work in progress. Often, creative people will set something aside, work on it bit by bit over long periods of time. That means they have a lot of work in progress. They have a lot of work that has been started but not yet finished. When I go to baseball games, I always like to get there before the first pitch. I like to get there before the game starts. I'm always frustrated if I arrive and the game is in progress. I want to see the beginning. If I get there and the game is in progress, that means the game has started already. And I don't like missing even a single inning. Have you ever been invited to just a portion of a meeting? It's kind of awkward. They invite you, but they say you can't come until a certain time. You're important enough for this part, but not for that part. Whatever. We deal with it, right? Still, it's awkward to walk into a meeting in progress. They say, Jeff, why don't you come at about 10.15? Okay, fine. So I show up at 10.15. The meeting is in progress. It has already started. Everyone already has their seats. There's already some momentum. I don't want to interrupt. I walk in. Everyone turns and looks at me. I'd prefer to come in during a break. But sometimes I have to walk into a meeting in progress. A meeting that has started but not yet finished. Hopefully, those days are over. All right, today's song of the week is Chasing Stars by Alesso, Marshmello, and James Bay. This one is just a guitar, vocals, and just a bit of extra melody in there. I was expecting something different when I pressed play. I like this song. James Bay told an interviewer it was about reminiscing about a time you had with another person where it felt like it was the two of you against the world. Great song, JR, Chasing Stars by Alesso, Marshmallow, and James Bay. JR, by the way, has seen both Alesso 
and Marshmallow Live, just FYI. And that brings us to the end of today's Plain English for July 14th, 2022. Happy Bastille Day, the national day in France. On July 14th, 1789, revolutionaries seized control of the Bastille, a prison controlled by the monarchy, sparking the French Revolution. So this is a good time to remind you that French is one of the languages we support in our transcripts. If you haven't been on the website to see the transcripts, we highlight about a hundred words per lesson, and then we translate those 100 words and phrases into French. So you can hover your mouse over the word and instantly see the definition in French. Now, the great thing about that is you can see the definition of a difficult word without breaking your momentum. And one thing that frustrates me about reading or listening in Spanish is having to stop and look up a word. But on plain English, when you see a complicated word, just hover over it and it shows you the definition in French. And it's always the right definition because our professional translators make sure you're seeing the correct definition for the context. And it's not only French. That's just the example I chose to give here on Bastille Day. We also support Spanish, Portuguese, Japanese, German, Chinese, Italian, Polish, and Turkish. Do Poland and Italy have an equivalent to Bastille Day? I'll take that as homework. But your homework should be to check out Plain English Plus at plainenglish.com slash plus if you're interested in the instant translations built right into our Plain English transcripts. Check it out at plainenglish.com slash plus, P-L-U-S, and we'll see you right back here on Monday with How to Plan a Digital Death.